Hello, welcome to Transmissible Briefs. Today we talk about the list of 12 priority pathogens that the World Health Organization recently published. They advocate more research for new antibiotics against this dirty dozen, as each of them is on a fast track to become a multi-resistant superbug. If you want to refresh your knowledge about this topic, then this podcast may be useful for you to complete. On the 1st of March of this year, two news items were launched, and both were related to antibiotics. But they covered events with almost 19 years between them. The first one reported the result of an auction, where an old sample of fungus was sold for over $14,000. It was one of the original samples in the discovery of penicillin, including the remarks of Alexander Fleming on the back of the Petri dish. The second one reported on the World Health Organization publishing a list of 12 bacteria that pose the greatest threat to human health. And guess what? They are all highly resistant to antibiotics. Most of us know the story of the accidental discovery of penicillin. On a late summer day in September 1928, spores of the penicillium fungus had landed on a bacterial culture in a forgotten petri dish. The dish had been used to culture and study Staphylococcus bacteria, but now was left on a cramped corner of Alexander Fleming's lab at St. Mary's Hospital in London. When cleaning up the lab, Fleming noted that the fungus blocked the growth of the bacteria and in fact had killed them. This had led to the discovery of penicillin, and soon many other antibiotics were designed and developed using similar molecular structures. But, along with the proliferation of new antibiotics, the usage proliferated as well, and soon bacteria started to select clones that could survive antibiotics. During his Nobel Prize lecture, Fleming already demanded a prudent use and warned about the danger of developing antimicrobial resistance. He said, It is not difficult to make microbes resistant to penicillin. The time may come when penicillin can be bought by anyone in the shops. Then there is the danger that the ignorant man may easily underdose himself and by exposing his microbes to non-lethal quantities of the drugs, make them resistant. This warning alone was not enough. Newer generations of antibiotics were discovered and as soon as the doctors noticed that some treatments would not work, it was easy to switch to a newer drug. But the learning curve of the bacteria did not change and they kept on learning how to survive low and incomplete treatments, making them stronger every time. As we did not make it hard for the microorganisms to learn this trick, our meat production industry grew, the industry could make billions selling antibiotics to every cattle farm, to every chicken farm, to every fish farm. But probably the worst of all is our own consumer pattern the indiscriminate use of these weapons of microbiological mass destruction for our own convenience. The alert that WHO sent out on Monday is a final alert. One about losing our last lines of defense in a balance against species who have been around for several billions of years. That is what the WHO list is all about. Countries all around the world are gradually aware that our last lines of defense are about to break. The bacterial families have been divided in three priority categories, depending on their respective needs for new antibiotics to treat them, a critical need, a high need and a medium need to develop new antibiotics. Pathogens with a critical need for new antibiotics include bacteria that have become resistant to a large number of antibiotics, including carbapamems, a last resort antibiotic group. Pathogens in the second and the third group include other bacteria that are becoming more and more antibiotic resistant. They cause common diseases such as gonorrhea and salmonellosis. Why such a most wanted list? What is the use? The scope of the current work was to identify the most important resistant bacteria at the global level for which there is an urgent need for new treatments. Some highly dangerous microorganisms are not on the list. Why? 
Well, mycobacterium tuberculosis, the cause of human tuberculosis, was not included since it is already a globally established priority for which innovative new treatments are urgently needed. So we are already hunting that target. On other existing priority areas for antimicrobial resistance, such as malaria and HIV, they were also not included since they are not bacterial infections and this wanted list targets bacteria. But the list will periodically be revised and allow inclusion of other pathogens such as viruses and parasites in the future. There are three families of bacteria in the highest category with a critical need for new antibiotics. Acinetobacter baumani is one of these organisms that mainly attack people with weak immune system and it is frequently the cause of hospital infections. If such opportunistic infections can no longer be treated by antibiotics, then there will be little that the doctors can do to help the patient survive. And now we see this organism developing rapid resistance against carbapenems. Remember our last line of defense? The story of Pseudomonas aeruginosa is similar. Here too we see this hospital infection organism develop resistance at a frightening speed. Enterobacteriaceae is a family with many members, for example the Klebsiella bacterium. These organisms are often part of our normal healthy microbiological flora that helps us survive. However, it is also an opportunist and like Acinetobacter and Pseudomonas, it can easily cause severe infections in the weak and immunocompromised. And now we see this one also resistant to our last resort antibiotic. Then we have the next group, the high need for new antibiotics. The bacteria in this group have shown a high speed of developing resistance to multiple antibiotics. We still have some lines of defense, but unlike the organisms from the first group, these do not only attack the weak and vulnerable. They are able to cause severe disease in anyone who is exposed to them, even the strong and healthy people. Each of these bacteria have usually a limited selection of antibiotics that are effective and we already see resistance developing fast. For example, the Enterococcus can be quiet as a common cell in our gut, yet some develop the ability to cause severe infections, for example meningitis, which is often lethal if not treated fast. The Staphylococcus is similar, often a quiet passenger of the skin, yet they too can develop invasive tricks. Then we have Campylobacter and the Salmonella, and the Neisseria, gonorrhea, they are all capable of causing severe infections. The last group consists of three organisms that each are natural born killers. The first and the second are major causes of pneumonia, blood poisoning and, if not treated effective with antibiotics, they are fatal. The last one is a worldwide infamous cause of dysentery. In countries with well working healthcare systems and available antibiotics, often not serious, but again, if not treated, some members of the Shigella family will kill, and they too are learning too many tricks to resist. So, what does WHO want to do with this list? It seems that the major objective is to help align the research and development priorities with public health needs. WHO has already launched a plan to support global coordination in the fight against antibiotic resistant bacteria. This global action plan has the following pillars. To improve awareness and understanding of antimicrobial resistance and the tools include effective communication, education and training. The second one is to strengthen the knowledge and evidence based and the tools for this are surveillance and research. Then as a third there is to reduce the incidence of infection and here we use the tools of effective sanitation, hygiene and infection prevention measures. The fourth one is to optimize the use of antimicrobial medicines and here we rely on guidelines for the use in animal and in human health. And finally, the target is to develop an economic case for sustainable investment and here we should increase investment in new medicines, in new diagnostic tools, in vaccines and other interventions. Now the global action plan already exists much longer. This new launch of the 12 most wanted bacterial organisms fits in the plan and focuses mainly on research and development of new antibiotics. 
Now what does the ECDC say about this? On their website there is clear support for the WHO list and ECDC agrees that the resistance to the last line of antibiotics is a grave public health concern. And therefore, ECDC says, it's imperative that we contain the spread of these highly resistant bacteria now, particularly since the antibiotic pipeline is empty for the development of new antibiotics and will likely remain empty for the years to come. ECDC published a policy brief a couple of months ago during the European Antibiotic Awareness Day, where they visualized the spread of this major public health concern in the EU. In 2013, resistance against carbapamem already occurred sporadically in most countries. But two years later, most countries now show regional spread and even interregional spread, which suggests that we are on a fast track to an endemic situation. Imagine the certainty of knowing that you are more and more surrounded by bacteria for which the usual cures no longer work. According to ECDC, only concerted worldwide measures offer solutions. We need improved infection prevention and controls in hospitals and other healthcare settings. And we need more prudent use of antibiotics. And therefore, ECDC suggests practical approaches, such as creating a multidisciplinary task force nationally. These should include experts in the field and political support will be essential. This task force should create policy collect data and intervene where necessary at the national and hospital level. The second is to ensure that hospitals have an adequate ratio of appropriately trained infection control practitioners to beds. ECDC advises a ratio of one infection control practitioner per 100 beds and they observe a wide variation of the ratio of ICPs to beds in hospitals across Europe. The third practical thing that they advise is active screening of at-risk patients when they are admitted to a hospital. This is an effective method to detect if patients are carrying highly resistant bacteria. And this is crucial for the prevention of spread in hospitals. When a patient is found to be a carrier of a highly resistant bacteria, infection prevention measures can be immediately implemented. This can only be done together with timely reporting of positive results by the microbiological laboratory. This measure is especially important to EU member states because there is increased mobility of patients between countries using healthcare. The fourth area is isolation of patients who are carriers of highly resistant bacteria. And this should ideally be done in single rooms or in separate areas such as cohort wards. This is an important measure to contain the spread of these bacteria. In 2012, the median percentage of hospital beds that were in single rooms, only 9.9% on average for Europe, and it was under 5% in eight EU countries. Finally, hand hygiene. Hand hygiene is the single most important measure to prevent transmission of bacteria in hospitals. The cost of hand hygiene promotion is less than 1% of the cost taking care of patients with healthcare associated infections. There is a wide variation in the consumption of alcohol based hand rub for hand hygiene in hospitals across Europe. And then there is a Center for Disease Dynamics, Economics and Policy. What do they have to say on the subject? In the first ever report on the state of the world's antibiotics, they say in 2015 that limiting the overuse and misuse of antibiotics is the only sustainable solution. They say we need to focus 80% of our global resources on stewardship and no more than 20% on drug development, according to this CDDP. No matter how many new drugs come out, if we continue to misuse them, they might as well have never been discovered. So everyone is concerned about antibiotic resistance, though the large institutes all present slightly different emphasis on the strategic approach. Now, what can you practically do with the topic? How can you contribute to part of the solution? If you are a public health professional or responsible for infection control in hospitals, then ECDC offers a very practical and convenient online directory with resources for prevention and control 
of antimicrobial resistance and healthcare associated infections. This directory lists strategies, guidance documents and training courses on prevention and control of antimicrobial resistance. These documents were published by ECDC, EU member states, international and national agencies and professional societies to support healthcare. And in addition, the directory lists ongoing research projects and their corresponding websites. They include examples of strategies, of action plans and projects. There are professional prevention guides on various topics such as cholestine resistant enterococci, methicillin resistant Staphylococcus aureus, the Clostridium difficile infections, organization of infection prevention and control in hospitals, um, guidelines on hand hygiene in healthcare, ventilator associated pneumonia, and surgical site infections, or procedures for endoscope decontaminations. And there's also guidelines for prudent use of antibiotics and how countries can promote good antibiotic stewardship. And finally, there are many training resources, including links to specific training courses in each of the EU member states. ECDC manages to translate the global strategy into practical approaches that you can immediately engage in, and I can recommend that you take a close look at this. If you want to read more about this topic, then download the ECDC policy briefing and the WHO pri priority list for uh, priority pathogens. They contain more details than we covered in this podcast. And if you were wondering about these colorful cards that I used in some of the slides, they are part of a card battle game called Defenders of Soma in the Healing Blade series. It's a great game to play, even if you have no medical background. But medical staff and students can also use it to practice their knowledge about bacteria, antibiotics and the development of resistance. You can get more information about this by sending me an email to info at transmissible.eu. I hope you have enjoyed this podcast. We'll come back soon with transmissible briefs on new public health alerts.